Tyler's presentation is empowering our next generation in the age of AI. Right, so we're here to learn about product development, but I can only do that if I show you a little bit about what we developed and how we did it. Then from there, you guys can kind of connect the points and see uh, strong suits as what was successful and what was not. So, as you see, we have the old school of learning, like she was talking about previously. We're looking into uh, where you'd have simply a teacher giving a lesson through a textbook. Kids would write things down on a piece of paper with a pen or on a chalkboard. But here you can see in New Zealand, kids are using our MBOT and computers to learn programming as well as engineering as uh, through our desktop software. So no longer are we really using things like compute. We're not really using paper and pen so much anymore. Folks are on tablets. Everything's kind of through a screen. So it's hard to say that technology hasn't really been evolving. Technology has had a dramatic increase, right? I mean, this is pretty absurd analogy with a rock here, but you have to give some recognition to how much things have really changed in the years. So the big question is embrace or replace. It's a, cop a common topic right now. People are worried that these giant scary robots are going to come in and steal their jobs. Well, there's a chance, but this is, this is actually happening in my job too, right? So the educational industry, AI is actually one of the industries that will be affected by AI as well. There's an estimate that states 800 million workers will be replaced by AI in the year 2030. That's roughly 60% of all jobs. That's my job too. AI can replace me. So, what empowers our next generation in the era of AI and robotics? So, what motivates children to go to school if high-tech jobs are so hard to come by and the percentages are so low? Governments are noticing these trends and beefing up their educational programs statewide. U.S. Obama has been trying to enact a STEM program since 2012 during his presidency. UK, China, and UAE are all following as well. So what are we talking about when we're talking about AI and education? Is AI the only answer when looking into the future of education? It is the part of the answer because we do need to be aware of automation and things that will be challenging for our children in their future. But the way we can hone in on this is by looking at STEM education, right? So previously, STEM education, science, technology, engineering and mathematics. What we've done now is actually added a component, arts. Right? So we're enacting the right side of the brain of children to get their creativity flowing and increase um, the usefulness of a human, right? So these are things that AI can't really do. They can't have debate, they can't have personal relationships as well as real humans do. They can't paint like Van Gogh, at least yet. So make block was founded in 2011 on Kickstarter. What we did was utilize Kick Kickstarter's forums, as well as Facebook forums, uh, Twitter, QQ groups, and talked to and engaged with industry professionals, teachers, to determine where the areas of improvement could be met and where a product could be developed. We have learned five things by doing some market research for our target audience. One is that the current education system is very stale and stagnant. That teachers are required constantly to change due to technology advancing. But due to lack of budget, this is rather hard to maintain. Okay. Third, children want to play. Obviously, children enjoy having fun, but we need to find a gap where, four, the parents will be satisfied that the parents are having fun, but also learning. Five, the government. So again, all of the governments want to be top ranking for their future generation to be the most educated and successful. Okay, so AI enhanced devices, right? So when we're creating products, we want to make sure that these devices are hands-on. So that means it's a physical product that kids can actually learn tactile cognitive skills to develop that part of their brain. It needs to be well designed in a way that is attractive for the user. It needs to be reliable. Obviously in a school situation, it has to be very durable in a way that if a kid throws it off the table, it'll last or it can be replaced via modular design. It needs to be gender neutral. We can't have anyone excluded during this 
when during your product development, so we need it to be well-rounded enough for everyone to be interested in the product. We also need integrated software for our product so that users can uh, expand upon it digitally, as well as learning materials. That's the top thing that all teachers are asking us for is curriculum. The curriculum is what brings it all together to make an AI integrated education solution. So right now I'm going to introduce some of the gadgets that we've created. These are some of our educational solutions. First I'm going to introduce AirBlock. This is our, there's some videos too, so um, this is our AirBlock. It's a programmable modular drone, so each piece is actually a magnet that snaps onto the main module. Uh, this has won quite a few uh, design awards throughout the years. Uh, here's a quick video. A few quick points about the AirBlock, actually. The interesting part about this is it's actually one of our most successful products as far as captivating the interest of our users, but it's actually not our top selling product. So when we go to trade shows, everyone loves the AirBlock. It's, it's a drone, it's a hovercraft. You can program it, you can learn with it. It's a very captivating product, but it brings people in to see what else we offer, which is not maybe so visually exciting, but then they realize the potential of products that are also program capable and end up purchasing other products as well. So next, this is Neuron. This is our electronic building block program. So these are a variety of inputs and outputs. It's like power modules, sensors, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi signals, cameras, voice recognition. Um, with this, you can make small IoT-like devices, things like self-watering plants, as well as uh, small guitars and other fun little gadgets. Cool. And then this is one of our latest releases. This is called Cody Rocky. So this is our latest tap into teaching AI functionality, such as uh, voice and face recognition, partnered with Microsoft Cognitive Services. Um, with that, we are teaching kids at a very young age of six and up how to uh, code at uh, very high levels using languages such as Scratch and then even Python. So let's, this is actually one of my favorite parts of uh, MakeBlock actually is we sponsor this event called MakeX. So in order to highlight our products, what we do is we host these events where teenagers come from all over to, to compete in a global robotics competition. Pretty fun event. So with this, we believe that we can bring STEM education, STEAM education to the world through our products to help solve the problem, right? So our product is a solution and that's what makes it so valuable. So there's a problem in education and what we're doing is solving it by providing this product. So in the United States, the Washington Post hosted a robotics competition, utilized our kits to create reporting robots. In Mexico, uh, the government hosted its first robotics event titled RoboMath, 
It was a statewide competition across 35 states and involved 800 schools. Then in Croatia, we have a local non-government organization called STEM Auto, and they actually have this car that they filled with all of our materials and actually drove out to over 500 schools um, that didn't have very high level funding and were able to provide STEM co STEAM courses for them. In Japan, we have another local uh, non-government NGO that was uh, that hosted an MBOT competition, and they received about 14,000 in attendance in just two days. In China, we see some very young kids, um, 10 and 14, actually built their own satellites that could send and receive Morse code with our product. And in Hong Kong, we have some young kids who were able to make smart home devices for the elderly, such as gas detection uh, devices, as well as like. A, like CO2 uh, detectors. So where's the future of STEAM education headed as far as product development? Products need to be easy to use. So a common problem we have is people come and they tell us that they're afraid to code or they're afraid to build something with robotics. So that only means that we need to make more engaging, developed products that are more fun and simple to use. The products need to be smarter, right? So one of our latest releases, Cody Rocky, at such an early age, at six years old, we're teaching advanced coding languages such as Python. And the products need to be strong, so they need to be built out of very robust materials. Obviously, you study your market. Our market is young kids. We're very aggressive with most products as far as things go in a classroom. It needs to be able to take a beating, and if it can't, it's not a successful product. So the question is, how do we evaluate the results of STEAM education? What about the lack of awareness? So a lot of times I talk to people about STEAM education or STEM and no one's even heard of it. And another problem here in the United States is actually a lack of funding. So there's two ways that we can solve this issue. One is educate the importance of STEAM education. So you saw MakeX, a global robotics competition, bringing that to the United States, as well as utilizing our resources like we did when we first started on Facebook, forums, and engaging with our clientele directly. This way we can educate the masses through the internet. Next, we can also offer diverse solutions, right? So we do offer products globally. We have over eight products currently, and they all cater to uh, education solutions for the, for the world, right? So we have a vast amount of products that encompass a total amount of price range, right? So starting very low, something like $59, goes all the way up to $300, $400 for a kit. Now, that's that all costs some money, so it's not like everything's free, but what we do offer is we still offer something for everyone. So right now you can go on our website, makeblock.com, and download our desktop software. It's called mBlock. With mBlock, you can actually learn how to code for free. Our software is all free, and we provide it for all of our users to begin and take a look at coding and see if it's something